Today's game is brought to you in HD by EA Sports and Madden NFL 11. Happy to have you alongside to what should be a fantastic football showcase. Who do you see as the key players for this matchup, Chris? Well, Gus, I've got my eyes on the two quarterbacks in this one. I had a chance to talk to both of these guys, obviously guys that have experience in this situation. They've been here before, and yet it's always so interesting. You can see a different look in their eyes when they're warming up. You know that they know the significance of these matchups, and it just adds another level of excitement to the football game. When you're talking about this kind of talent on the field, this should be a really good one. I know you're excited. I'm excited. Let's get it going. Interesting, Chris. Great storyline here today, and we'll follow that storyline as this game moves on. Denver will kick it deep. Wilson is back to receive the kick. He stopped at the 24-yard line. They'll go to work at the 24-yard line. Gives it to the back. He doesn't get back to the line. And when your defensive line can handle their guys up front and not allow the offensive linemen to get down on the linebackers, it really gives those linebackers a chance to look great. That'll make it second down with 10 to go. The pickskin is on the 23-yard line. Flips it out short to his left. And he's knocked out. At the 33-yard line. Well, they got away with that one. Really not a very good play throwing back across your body like that. But <laughs> every once in a while, you'll sneak that in. It's third down now and just about the length of the football away from the first down marker. Drops him for a loss at the 30. The Seahawks are lining up to punt this one away. He takes it to maybe the 36-yard line. He was just a couple of steps away from breaking that one all the way. This coverage team better start stepping up or he's going to take one in for six. They get it out there on the toss. He's dropped down at the 43-yard line. A seven-yard play. And that'll bring up second down. They'll need about three yards here on second down. Tosses left. Hill will tackle him for a loss at the 42. Go, go, go! 
So it's third down. The offense will need about four yards to pick up the first. Here's the throw. And it's not loose as he tried to corral it. Jabbar Gaffney made solid contact and popped the ball out of there. And that's so frustrating as a wide receiver. You know you're going to get hit on the play. Just wrap it up, make the catch, and go to the ground. It's fourth down. The Broncos lining up to punt. He gets back to the 29 before being stopped. They could do nothing against this defense on their previous drive. Give to the tailback. And the tackle was made by Hagen. It's a gain of four. Second down. Second and six yards to go. They hand it off again. He fights forward to about the 36. That's a gain of two. And now it's third down. The offense needs about three yards to get the first here on third down. They'll keep it on the ground again. He's brought down at the 42. Really nice run there. He bowled forward for six yards and a first. So the Rock sits at the 42. Short throw to the left. Comes down with it. And he's knocked out at the 45. Three-yard gain on the throw. That'll make it second down. Flips out short. Brings it in for a completion. The threat of the run is always going to make the play pass more effective, forcing them to respect the run, and that will allow things to open up downfield. Short yardage situation here. They'll need a little less than a yard to convert. They give it off here, and they're not going to get it. Great stop. Well, I'll be honest here. I really thought they would pass in that situation. You call a run, hoping you catch the defense somehow off guard, but that time they were not off guard. Fourth down. The Seahawks are lining up to punt it away. The ball goes into the end zone. Touchback. He'll take over at the 20. We're scoreless at the end of the first quarter here at Invesco Field at Mile High.
The Broncos will start this drive at the 20. Good coverage downfield. Tons of pressure. He's hit as he throws. When you get that kind of pressure, a lot of times the play will result in something worse than just an incompletion. Second down and seven yards to go. The ball is on their own 20. Just gets it off. And that's a catch. He's dropped down at the 29-yard line. Yeah, really not much a defense can do when you get a guy that can throw the football like that. You know, you get yourselves in position defensively. You think you're in the right spot. You're going to make a play. And a guy makes a throw like that. And you go, hey, that's a good throw. a running back hesitate just a little that time you could see there really was no hole and the running back was just fishing for a place to go Can't do that. so it's fourth down the Broncos lining up to punt Wilson fields it at the 29. You know, I like that return. Nothing flashy, but it was really effective. The thing I hate to see are guys that are dancing around back there trying to be a playmaker when they're really not. At least he got up the field, got a few yards. That's what I like to see. He hasn't had a good first half at all. Just can't seem to get through this defense. It's second down and nine to go. Passes short right side. He's tackled at the 46-yard line. Everything seemed to work perfectly on that one. And that's a pattern that this team likes to run. You know they've been studying that all week on film, and yet they still can't stop it. from their own 46-yard line. They keep it on the ground with the tailback. Elvis Doomerville was there for the stop. Nothing makes a defensive coordinator cringe more than seeing that kind of run because then it sets up the play action and there's almost no way to stop an offense if you can't stop the run and you have to deal with play action. They line up at the 43. Hit and drop behind the line. Yeah, it really just throws you off rhythm to have a play that gains nothing. You know, you're usually you're going to get something, two, three, four yards, and it keeps you in that rhythm. But when a defense makes a play like that, it really throws your offense off. Feeds it to the back. You know, Marshawn Lynch may have had a few skeptics when he first came in the league, but anytime you get on this team, you know you're going to have to prove how tough you are. And he always seems to do it with a little smile on his face. He's having fun playing the game of football. Looks left. Here's a short pass. Doomerville was there to bring him down. Hushman Zada picks up two yards with the grab. The pass is away. 
He's wrestled down at the 20. What happened there? Well, the defense was in zone coverage. They got good pass protection. And anytime that happens, it tends to really stretch those zones and widen the holes. The Seahawks call a timeout, and they'll have two remaining. They line up at the 20. Passes it downfield. It's going to be a first and goal for the Seahawks. Patience for a wide receiver is just so key. He's able to manipulate that defense, set them up one play, come back with the exact same look and break off of it the next. Beautifully run. First and goal. Just gets it away. The defense is backed up against their own end zone. off up the middle. Touchdown Seahawks! The Seahawks get the first touchdown of the game. As much as we want to give credit to the running backs for scoring touchdowns, it is really the offensive line that gets it done when you get down here. And he adds the point after. Seattle is up seven. This is a good opportunity to take a look at the drive summary presented by Verizon. He'll take it from the two. Gets it to the 21. They were forced to punt on their last drive. They'll go to work at the 21. There's the deep throw. The ball is tipped away. Jabbar Gaffney was the intended receiver. It's now second down, 10 yards to go. Still looking for an open man. It's tipped away, great defense. Third down coming up after that incompletion. They line up at the 21. It's the tailback. The stop was made by the beast, Brian Erlocker. So, it's fourth down. The Broncos lining up to punt.
Wilson fields the ball at the 30. The Seahawks ended their last drive with a touchdown, so they'll look to make it two in a row. He gets off the throw. Up top! Oh, he hauls it in! He's brought down at the 28-yard line. T.J. Hushmanzada just showed us why he is such a talent. He just had exceptional acceleration after the catch, and if he can make a guy miss, he is really dangerous. He spikes the ball. So with the half ending, they're just going to try and put three points on the board. The kick bounces off the upright. No good. And we've come to halftime here. The score, 7-zip. Denver will get it first here in the second half. He'll start at the 8-yard line. He gets out to the 28-yard line. They'll set up shop at the 28-yard line. Gives it up the gut. He's tackled at the 32-yard line. Pick up a four. That brings up second down. On the ground with the tailback. He's dropped down at the 36-yard line. That's a three-yard gain. And so it will be third down. Third down now. They'll need a couple of yards to convert for a first down. Tosses it out. And they didn't get it. That's where I'd like to see the quarterback have a little flexibility in the game plan. He comes to the line of scrimmage. He could not have liked what he saw that time with the defense they deployed. Why not get out of that play and check off? Fourth down. The Broncos ready to punt this one away. Returns the punt from the 16. He really didn't have any room to work on that punt return. Yeah, that certainly wasn't one of his best efforts there. Maybe if he would have gotten a little more help from his blockers, he could have broken one out of there. You know, sometimes it just takes one good block to create a scene to get one up the field. He makes his way to about the 32. So they line up at the 32. It's a pass. 
He's wrestled down around the 47-yard line by Hill. Off up the middle. He's brought down at the 49 yard line. Gets about four on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Hands it off. Gains his way to the 36-yard line. They'll give it off here. Brought down behind the line. Really impressive play that time by this defensive line. It wasn't just one guy, but every guy up front just dominating their guy at the point of attack. They line up at the 36. He rolls out to his right. It's complete. Clutch reception. The Seahawks are continuing to find success throwing the ball. The pass protection is solid, and the defense with a very conservative approach playing off these receivers, allowing them to get open. They line it up at the 22. Here's the give. He's dropped down at the 19. It's a gain of three. Second down. And that's the end of the third quarter. The score, 7 zip. The Seahawks, already up by a touchdown, are in great position to extend their advantage as we get set for the start of the fourth. Barely gets it off. Well, the defense didn't get the sack, but they got the next best thing, and that was a bad throw. So, it's fourth down, and this will be a 37-yard field goal attempt. And the kick is good! And with that, the score is the Seahawks. Ten, the Broncos, nothing. Now it's time to take a look 
at the drive summary presented by Verizon. Here we go. He'll return it from the four-yard line. He makes it out to about the 27-yard line. The defense played exceptionally well the last time this offense had the ball. Oh, he's off. He's wrestled down at the 38. Now we have a first down and 10 to go. They're going to pitch it. He's brought down at the 39-yard line. You would think they would be looking to conserve time right now. Yeah, somebody may want to go over and whisper in the head coach's ear that, uh, hey, coach, we are still behind here. He's dropped down at the 38. Shabar Gaffney finally gets a catch, his first one of the game. They line up at the 38. With the misdirection. And he's tackled at the 35. A pickup of about three. As a quarterback, you really want to make that pre-snap read, and it's kind of hard to not see the middle linebacker. He came on the blitz that time, and sometimes you just need to get out of a play like that. Third down coming up after that incomplete pass. Gets it away. Eddie Royal finally gets a catch, his first one of the game. Short throw to the right. He completes it. They get him down, but the huge play will result in a first and goal for the Broncos. Here they go, first and goal, down by a couple of possessions. Touchdown, Broncos! They got the touchdown they were looking for right there, but they still have some work to do. And I think we'll see an onside kick here. Anytime you need a touchdown, you're probably going to be forced to go for the onside kick rather than kicking it deep and trying to play defense. Big kick here. This will make it a three-point game. And he adds the point after. We're nearing the two-minute warning in the fourth. The Broncos, 7, the Seahawks, 10. This is a good opportunity to take a look at the drive summary presented by Verizon. Denver will be kicking off. Branch is deep, looking to return the kickoff. And he gets the ball at the 5. They catch him. At the 30. The Seahawks will set up shop at the 30. The give to the tailback. He's wrestled down at the 35. Five yards. That brings up second down.
Second and five coming up here. We have two minutes left to play in this game. Here's a halfback. This is close. They'll bring out the chain. The ref signals that they're just a little short. The Broncos just took their first time out. They hand it off. He's dropped down at the 46-yard line. And that should just about do it. That was a big-time clutch run right there to try and seal this game up. It looks like all they're going to have to do now is just sit on the ball. And we'll have a first down and 10. They'll get the call again. Bailey will tackle him for a loss at the 45-yard line. They'll face second down and 10. So the ball on the 45. Hagen will drop him behind the line at the 45. So another third down coming up for the offense. Brought down at the 49-yard line. And with under one minute left in this ball game, they'll be forced to punt it away, clinging to this small lead. Fourth down. The Seahawks line up to punt. He'll take this one from way back at the two. And as their offense comes onto the field, what are you looking for them to do? Well, they don't have a lot of time to work with here, so it's safe to say that you're going to see the hurry-up, pass-only offense. In fact, I think you go ahead and take the deep shot down the field now. You could get a penalty. You can get a completion, maybe a tip ball. Something has to happen down the field here. They have one more shot. Let's see if their prayers will be answered with a Hail Mary. Surveys the field. That's all from Invesco Field at Mile High. We'll have highlights next.
Here's today's Swagger Player of the Game, presented by Old Spice Deodorant, the greatest smell in the NFL. One player rose above the rest today. Here's the Doritos Crunch Time Play of the Game. This has been a presentation of EA Sports and Madden NFL 11. This is the Extra Point. Hi everyone, welcome to the Extra Point. I'm Fran Charles from NFL Network. And we're set to take you around the league with game recaps, previews, and much more. Let's swing it over to Alex Flanagan, who will get us started. Thanks, Fran. Up first, highlights and stats from the weekend's best games, brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Let's start in Denver. The Seattle Seahawks clashed with the Denver Broncos. Denver was smothered in the passing game. They got nothing going. Seattle hung on for the three-point victory. The Jacksonville Jaguars went up against the San Diego Chargers at Qualcomm Stadium. Phillip Rivers found a nice rhythm passing for over 300 yards for the Chargers. San Diego's defense was unstoppable in the pass rush department. They got back there seven times. The Chargers won it in overtime. Your final score, 20 to 17. The Pittsburgh Steelers faced off against the Tennessee Titans at LP Field. Heinz Ward made an impression on the defense, totaling over 100 yards in catches for the Steelers. Pittsburgh's defense was causing all kinds of problems for the offensive line, including getting five sacks. Pittsburgh earned the victory 24 to 20. Let's check in on the standings in the NFC West after two weeks of play. All right, so it's time now to present our top two players of the week. Congratulations to this week's selection for Offensive Player of the Week. Julian Peterson has won the Defensive Player of the Week award. All right, Alex, thank you. Now here's a look at the entire slate of games this weekend. Great games are on tap for this weekend. Alex will give you a preview of the best matchups. New York goes to Miami to take on the Dolphins. The Jets have won two straight games. Joe Flacco has been very solid behind center for the Jets so far. New York is ranked first in the NFL in red zone percentage. Atlanta will visit the Superdome to take on the Saints. The Saints are winners of two straight. San Diego travels to Quest Field to take on the Seahawks. The Chargers have won two in a row. Antonio Gates has been the early go-to guy in the Chargers offense. San Diego is ranked first in the NFL in red zone percentage. That'll do it from the studio. I'm Fran Charles from NFL Network. Join us next time for The Extra Point. This has been The Extra Point, brought to you by Madden NFL 11.